Well, what is going on? Um, hope everybody's having a happy, fantastic Friday. Um, I wanted to talk today uh, about obedience and Christian obedience. And immediately, some of you who are watching this, you're like, oh gosh, here we go. The idea of obedience and the call to be obedient. Um, but let's talk for a second. A couple weeks ago, you can actually find this on YouTube, so Google it or YouTube it. There is, um, There was a woman who was in the middle of a tennis match, and she was playing in some world tennis match. It was a really big deal in the tennis world, and she won the first set, and then she was losing. Well, as she was uh, losing in the second set, or however tennis works, I'm not a tennis expert, but as she was losing in the second set, um, she, goes off to, she goes off to the side, gets a pair of scissors, and then she begins to cut off her own ponytail, right? So this tennis player is in the middle of a tennis match and she's losing. So she goes and grabs a, a pair of scissors and just starts hacking away at the ponytail on back of her head. It's crazy. And so the announcers, if you watch the video on YouTube, the announcers are just like, wow, we've never seen this before. We've never seen someone cut their own hair in the middle of a tennis match. Um, but they came to the conclusion that the ponytail was bothering her it was causing her to lose, and she wanted to win so badly that she was willing to cut her ponytail off in order to win. And here's the crazy thing. After she cut the ponytail off, she ended up winning. Like, that's a crazy story. Just Google it. I mean, it is nuts. Now, what, is that, what in the world does that have to do with obedience? Um, here's what I truly believe. So if you're not a Christian and you're watching this, you kind of get a little bit of insight into Christianity. If you are a Christian and you're watching this, maybe this will be encouraging for you. But as Christians, we should be willing to go to the same lengths and the same extremes that that lady went through when she cut her own ponytail off in order to win. When it comes to our obedience and following Jesus, we should be willing to go to the same extremes. We should be willing to go to the same lengths in order to be obedient to God. Like, we hear that story. We're like, okay, there's this woman, and she's in the middle of a tennis match, and she wants to win so badly, she cuts her own ponytail off in the middle of the tennis match, and she ends up winning. That's crazy. But that should just be a picture that we as Christians, what it, what it looks like for us as Christians to be obedient, to take what the Word of God says and to act upon it and to do whatever is necessary to remove the sin and the brokenness that we fall into and the temptations we give into to remove those from our lives. So I want to read to you three verses out of 1 John chapter 2 um, that really have shaped this idea for me. So this is 1 John 2, 3 through 6. John writes, And by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Whoever says I know him but does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Okay, I want you to notice something about those verses. I know you probably don't have them in front of you. You should look them up. I mean, just so you can see them um, for yourself. But those verses didn't say, this is how you come to know God, by being obedient to him. That's not what John said. On repeat, John said, you want to know how you know God already? You want to be obedient. You want to know how you know God already? You want to know how you've, you can know that you've entered into a relationship with him? All of a sudden, there's this internal conflict where your old self and your flesh and the world, they, they want you to give in to temptations, things you used to do and not give a second thought about, but all of a sudden, there's something inside of you that says, I don't want to do those things anymore because I have a relationship with Jesus. See, that's how all relationships work, if we're honest. Yeah, I got married. Um, and when I got married, there were certain things that I didn't want to do, but because I love my wife, Colleen, I'm willing to do them because they please her. And in the same way, if you've entered into relationship with Jesus, he's going to call you to do things that you might not want to do. Like he's going to call you to do things that don't feel natural, that don't feel right, that don't feel good. Like when you hear, when you think about doing it, you're like, that doesn't feel right. But at the same time, you know that he loves you. You know that he cares about you. And ultimately, get this, lean in. He wants the best for you. He really does. He's not some janky used car salesman who's trying to talk you into um, doing something that you know benefits him but doesn't benefit you at all. And the way we know this is true is we can look at the cross. 
Because when it comes to our relationship with Jesus, it's a two-way street. Because Jesus calls us to lay down things that we might want to do for our benefit, but we see Jesus in this relationship willing to lay down his own life for us. Like that's what he did on the cross. So Jesus comes to the cross. He says, I love them so much that I'm willing to die to die for them. I'm willing to, to do something that I don't want to do, willing to do something that is unpleasant. I'm going to die for them. And in doing so, he gives us that eternal life. And when we look at the cross, listen, when he's calling you to do something that you don't want to do, and you begin to believe the lie that says, God's holding back on me. He doesn't want what's best for me. Look at the cross. Like, look at what he did on the cross for you and for me. And if you look at what he did on the cross for you and for me, you're reminded that he wants nothing but the best for you because he was willing at his own expense to lay down his life for you. And so here's what I want to do as we kind of wrap this up. I hope that, you know, these words maybe in just a little way have kind of ignited a flame in your heart. And maybe there's a little bit of you as a Christian, if you're watching this and you're a Christian, you're like, yeah, I need to get more serious about obedience. Because obviously if Jesus is calling me to lay it down, I need to lay it down. Like if, if Jesus is calling me to lay it down, he wants what's best for me and I should go ahead and lay it down. And so what does that look like? Well, let's go back to the original illustration. She cut her hair, right? Like she went to extreme lengths. So what are the extreme lengths that you need to go to? Like many people out there, including myself, maybe the struggle is with something like internet pornography. Like I've been there. I've been in that addiction. I know what that rut feels like. And for me, in order to get out of that rut and to be obedient to the God who loves me and wants the best for me and who saved me and who I'm in relationship with already, I had to start confessing to people. And now I'm telling Facebook, so whoever ends up watching this, yeah, you know, I, had to, I used to look at internet pornography. It used to be a problem of mine. But I used to be one, I, I, I was like, I need help with this. I don't want to do this, but my flesh does. And I started confessing to people. I started repenting. I started being transparent. And so maybe the very first step, if you're like, okay, there's this thing in my life and nobody knows it's there. Maybe the very first step for you is just to find somebody you can talk to. Find somebody you can pull aside and say, hey, I'm struggling with this thing. I've got this thing in my life. I don't want it there. And maybe in doing that, um, you'll begin to see the Lord work in ways that uh, you really want him to work. And remember, and, and if you're watching this and you're not a Christian, and maybe you scoff at like the idea of Christian obedience and you're just like, oh, that sounds so backwards. That sounds so antiquated. That sounds so old school in like a not cool way because some things are old school and it's old school in a cool way. You're like, that's just so old school and not in a cool way. I want you to understand that we as Christians, we're not obedient to earn God's love. We're obedient to God because we've already received it and we know he wants the best for us. So anyway, I hope this might ring helpful for many of you uh, on this Friday afternoon. Um, and I'm sure I will see all of you back here before too long. Have a great weekend.